So have you ever wondered why armies in the 18th century or earlier were marching so slow? And why are they marching at 60 steps per minute? To find an answer to this, we actually need to discuss an older element of music theory called the tactus. So today when we say a song is slow or fast, we mean that as an absolute value. We're talking about tempo. For an example, I can play this phrase at roughly 75 beats per minute. Now I can play the exact same phrase, but sped up to a quick step, so around 108 beats per minute. You see that nothing changed. The phrase is the same, the time signature is the same, but because I increased the tempo, the speed also increased. Our ability to do that today is really thanks to the metronome. Throughout the 18th century, we see a shift in music theory that's occurring alongside the scientific revolution. So this is a period of time where people are trying to quantify and categorize everything. And one thing they want to do is quantify what it means to play fast or play slow. This is why the metronome is invented. You also see 18th century drum manuals talking about using the pendulum on a clock or second hand on a pocket watch acting as early metronomes. Uh, we see early military manuals talking about marching at a rate of 60 steps per minute, um, that sort of thing. From about 1200 to 1650, we don't have the same concept of music. Instead, they're using what we call today mensurial notation or mensuration. In this earlier music theory, uh, musicians and lay people, literally anyone who had heard music in church or live or by military musicians, would have understood music as having an implicit, understood, absolute fixed tempo. This is the pulse or the beat of the music uh, called the tactus. Academics today show that this tactus was roughly 60 beats per minute. Um, and every piece of music written during this time, no matter how fast or how slow, would have been performed at 60 beats per minute. So how does the tactus work? Well, in our modern example, I played the same rhythm but at two different speeds or two different tempos. In mensuration, I'll play the same speed, but different rhythms to create the impression of speed. For example, if I set the metronome at 60 beats per minute, if I want to play a slow beating, I'll play longer notes, so half notes and whole notes, something like this. If I want to play a fast beating, I'll play shorter notes, so 16th notes and roll movements, something more like this. Notice that both of these rhythms were at 60 beats per minute, but the first one felt slow and the second one felt fast. So what does this mean for our soldiers? Well, as people who were surrounded by music their whole life, in church, in the streets, in the military, they would have understood music as having this sort of implicit, absolute tempo of 60 beats per minute. And this would have been a very normal ideal to them. So it makes sense that, you know, for them, the natural rate of march of a, of a natural beat or pace was at 60 beats per minute. And from there, you can have a quick step the quick step is literally doubling that pace. It's going from 60 to 120. So you still have that implicit 60 beats per minute, um, but now it's just on your left foot instead of alternating between the two feet. So it still really makes sense the way that their rate of mar march was working. Um, as the 18th century turns into the 19th century, as music theory is really starting to change um, and take on a more modern understanding of tempo, um, that's really when we see tempo being so variable. Um, when we see the quick step becoming 108 or 110, where it's shifting a lot, um, where we see the common time march moving forward into 75 and then later into the 90s. Um, so we see you know, a change in the rate of march that matches a change in how people understood tempo and how music theory dealt with tempo.